Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and today we're working on two pairs of Birkenstocks. Both are the Arizona, but we're doing two very different soles on these. So come join us, check it out, what the differences are. They're both Vibrams that we're doing, so there's a little bit of difference between the two and the way that we have to do it. Um, you may have seen some of my previous videos on Birkenstock resoling, but I thought I'd show it to kind of clear up the air, in other words, on the Vibram side of things. So join us and check it out. <laughs> So thank you for joining us and again with the Birkenstocks, it's that time of year. I got a bunch of them that were shipped in, brought in, uh, just Birkenstocks everywhere. But um, yeah, today it's Birkenstocks, we're doing two different soles. One of them is going to be getting the Vibram Sierra sole, which is definitely on the thicker side. Let me just grab one of them. You can see right there. And that's going on this brown oiled Habana color is what it's called. You can see that this are brand new, never worn, but the gentleman wanted the soles replaced with the Vibram. You can see the thickness there. So this one is fairly simple. It's just removing the old sole, cleaning everything up, and being able to apply the Vibram Sierra sole. However, the black pair here <coughs> is a little bit different. This is also an old one. This one has been worn, as you can tell, so it's not a new pair, but there's minor fixes here and there that we'll have to do. But we are putting the Vibram Skull on. Now, the Vibram Skull is a much, much thinner sole uh, than the Sierra. As you can tell, it's significantly thinner. So in order to compensate for that, what we end up doing is usually putting on a midsole on there. Now, we can build up the thickness even more if we have to. However, the dilemma is when we build it up too high, I am going to, this is actually the wrong midsole. I have a thicker version of this one, which I'll grab in a minute and uh, you'll see it. And I'll be able to show them side by side comparison this is just the midsole that i grabbed real quick but i'll be able to show you um you know the fact that you know th that that's what has to be done and if we put on something much thicker and it's a heavier material like a midsole like this then you're gonna have issues with the bending the cork has already got enough density in it and if we put too much rubber in other words that's more on the solid side walking may be a little bit more challenging this one's a little bit on the easier side just because even though it's a thick sole the way that the tread pattern is designed on it it still has a lot of give and flexibility on it so let's start breaking these down all right so we're going to start out with the birkenstock uh habana ones the new ones we'll start out by pulling up the sole first and usually it's always easier to pull it up right here where the leather connects because the uh way the adhesive is bond it doesn't pull on the cork or anything because sometimes if I notice that it starts to pull the cork and then I'll then I can stop in time and then that area we just end up having to grind instead of pulling it up or anything now sometimes we'll use a solvent to deactivate the adhesive but I try strictly using that if we're replacing the footbed as well um, you know, it's one of those things where, it's, after all, it is a solvent still, and I don't want it possibly damaging the cork. So it looks like it is pulling up that cork just a little bit too much for my liking right there. Just double check. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to sand it. So we're gonna get the knife. knife is behind the camera on the on the uh, magnet so I'm gonna slice off some of that just less less stuff to sand then so one of the challenge with these is because these are kind of a larger size they're size 14 men's, so you can see how loosely sitting they are on this last, plus the bottom strap popped out. But, that's what we're 
sometimes I have to do. Some of you may be thinking 14, that's huge. We used to sell Birkenstocks when we were located in a different, different city altogether. Still in Colorado, but different city. We used to sell Birkenstocks and uh, we had a lot more retail and everything. That was our main thing, but when I relocated, I decided to get out of the retail and concentrate more on the repairs. And um, so I, at one point, I had, I had plenty of size 14s and they, they'd sell. But then at one point I managed to get my hands on European size 50. So that's like a, let's see, it's about a 17. And it sat for a couple of months. I'm like, eh, I probably shouldn't have spent the money on it, but it sold. And the gentleman even asked to special order a few more for him. Size 17. Now that is a big burk. All right, so for the video, I'm gonna switch over to this other one here. This is the more worn one. Same story, we're gonna pull it up here. And this one seems to be peeling up better, but once we start getting to this area here, right underneath, see how everything's kind of separating? That cork is wanting to crack. We don't want that to happen. We're not replacing the footbeds on these. Footbeds are still in decent shape. They're just looking a little shabby, in other words. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing on that. Sometimes we get lucky and the whole thing comes off. On a used pair especially, it's because somebody left them in their car or had gotten the footbeds wet. Now if we're replacing the footbed as well, not just the sole, and the footbed is the cork actually, the the whole entire sole, insole in here. Um, then we'll use a solvent, as long as it's a leather upper. If it's a synthetic upper, we can't use the solvent. It has a tendency to kind of eat away at the synthetic material. But it kind of gives you an idea that different broken stocks will be a little different with each one. There's another one that I'm also working on right now. I'm doing a separate video on it. I'll show you guys here in a little bit, or I'll grab it now. This guy here. This one we are replacing the footbed on, but it's got a tow bar in it. So that's gonna be an interesting one. I'll probably post this one after the after these ones are done because I want to kind of let everybody see what the whole deal is. But if you want to check out that video and you're watching a few weeks down the road after this video is posted definitely check out that video and you'll see how we have to get in there to cut that tow bar um, because the footbeds don't come pre-punched with uh, a slot for the tow bar to fit through and you can definitely see how that's done but for the time being that kind of gives you an idea we've got the edges here kind of removed that helps cut down on sanding that we have to do and uh yeah so at this point i just gotta go ahead and sand it and we're ready to continue on. I'm actually gonna spray these down a little bit with a vinegar cleaning agent to clean the uh, leather uppers and then the footbed. If we are replacing usually the footbed as well, we'll actually put these straps in a, in a whole bath, like a Swedish bath to really soak it, but we don't wanna get that cork soaked so too badly or anything. So I'm just gonna spray it down, kind of rub it up, clean it up and get that going. But these ones, since they're new, we're not messing with the uppers on it. Uh, our goal is to try to avoid messing with the uppers on this particular one. So kind of gives you an idea, but we'll see you back at the sanders when it's time to get everything sanded out.
everyone. So I've got the first one all glued up and everything. Now, just wanted to point out, so you're going to have a little bit of small chunks of that sole left behind, as you can tell that brown there. Same thing on this black one, not quite as much though, just because this is a more worn out pair. But the goal is to prevent uh, sanding it down too far because after all, this is a cork and there is a little bit of a uh, material on there. I just forgot what it's called, uh, but you can probably see it, that little weave pattern in there that we have to try to make sure that is intact as much as possible. Obviously we're going to nick it a little bit here and there and that's normal, but the majority of it we want to try to keep intact and in order to prevent any kind of issues like that, sometimes we have to leave some of that behind. Oh, that was Marcus heading out the door, but um, yeah, just to give you an idea of why there's a little bit left behind. It's one of those things that doesn't get in the way of the uh, support features of the shoes at all because it is a thick cork material and all that so don't be concerned about it but one thing i want to point out on this one however this is the worn out pair there was a little spot as you can tell right there where it bends there was that crack right there and we're going to go ahead and take care of that the new pairs usually there's not much issues like that used pairs sometimes would come across that issue a little bit so i'm going to open this up because the other thing is that you can see right here, these start to come unglued in some of these areas. So I need to make sure I blow out the dust because sometimes if you have a pet, especially you'll get a lot of pet here and there, uh, hair in there. And then also if you tend to wear socks with your Birkenstocks, which again is one of those weird things, honestly, in my opinion, but to each his own, it just looks weird to me. I, I like weird as in, it looks so uncomfortable. Sandal should let your feet breathe, but you got socks on. It just confuses me. But we gotta make sure we glue up that area there. Sometimes it's just one little spot. Sometimes it's a handful of spots and stuff. And usually we, we try to make sure that we get through all of it as much as possible. Okay, so just like that there. And then this spot here, get some more glue in there. Make sure I bend it. And basically, I mean, we're still gonna put a cork seal on these ones. The new ones don't need it, but the, but the ones that are worn, they definitely are gonna need the cork seal all around and everything. And the cork seal will help seal up some of that stuff there too. You can see that little leather cover that peels up some. And uh, so I'm not gonna put too much glue there, but the straps, however, we need a little bit more durability. So the adhesive is what comes into play. As far as like the adhesives, they're not, not too, um, what was I gonna say? Not too finicky, in other words, because of the type of materials these are. So a lot of these contact cements that are out there that we use will work very well on it. Uh, barge, Jet Set, Masters, um, you know, the adhesive can be very crucial when it comes to leather on leather or certain rubber on rubber type of contact. But because this is a cork material, we... Uh, we can basically use any one of those contact cements and they all work about the same. I mean, there's not much issues. Now, however, now that I got that kind of glued up, don't worry, I'll wipe up and clean up the glue. It's just one of those dirty parts that you have to do. The soles, or actually, we'll start out the midsole, I'll show you. So these are the midsoles that we're using. This was the one that I showed you originally. This is the one that we're using here right now. So just to give you an idea, if the camera can catch it, there is a bit of a thickness difference. However, when we do some of the more colored style soles, like if they're red or blue or something, um, in order to match a midsole up in color, we do have to use this one here. Um, it's a, let's see, four millimeter versus a six millimeter here. So, uh, the six millimeter only comes in the black, all the colored options, white, you know, blue, green, yellow, uh, red. I have to pull them all out towards the end of the video. So make sure you stay tuned. I'll show them all to you, but they all end up coming in that four millimeter option 
only. So I want to make sure I point that out. Now, as far as these uh, midsoles, make sure ah, that's the side. Midsoles and the soles, we do have to kind of prime them beforehand because there is oil left behind from my hands, even though I'm working with thinners and stuff all day long. I still have to wipe it down some to remove any oils because they will kind of get in the way. So I'll make sure that's prepped and then just put a nice even thin coat. Same thing with that Vibram sole, not just the midsole as well. I've got the Vibram sole sanded out because Vibram soles have a tendency to have spots that were missed from the factory. They're not sanded. Some models of soles are not even sanded out from the factory when we get them in, so we have to sand them completely. But one way or another, the oils from our hands when we're handling the soles will kind of get in the way of the sole. Um, it's not an issue with leather or cork or anything like that but it becomes a bit of an issue with rubbers definitely but just wanted to point that out that I have to make sure that this is nicely prepped all around you can see some of that black coming off there that's uh, from the sanding even after I use the air compressor blow everything off as much as I can it's gonna be small little amounts of residue left behind and it's not an issue it is not it's the oils that I'm mostly concerned about so I have to make sure that this is oil free before the contact cement goes on and voila so I'm gonna go ahead and finish gluing everything up I'll see you back here in just a little bit oh, one other thing actually I'll point out before I let you go is that there is one thing that I will point out. Now this one here, you can see that obviously there's a piece of leather that pulls over, so there's a bit of a cavity here that's empty. Now, usually when it's a broken in pair, everything's broken in on the footbed, so it's not a much of an issue. However, on a brand new pair, or if we replace the footbeds, that cavity here is just a little more pronounced because nothing has been broken in yet, especially on a new footbed and everything. So if you have the footbed replaced, say by us or any other cobbler um, uh, in the world, there may be a little bit of an indentation, in other words, from when the sole is put on and the footbed itself. So just bear that in mind when you're having the footbed replaced. That little indentation will even out after the first few wears, uh, more and more as you wear it. And then after a period of time, it will end up basically turning out like this where it doesn't stand out nearly as much. That's part of the things that you want to make sure you keep an eye out if you're picking up your Birkenstocks from us or from another cobbler or whoever, you know, that that is a thing that there is kind of a little bit of a indentation from the footbed itself and also those leather straps being adhered underneath at the bottom. So I want to point that out while I still have the soles off. Okay, make sure there are no missed spots. All right, I'll see you back here in just a bit. All right, everyone. So we're back here again. I've already got these double glued and I've got the uh, midsole piece in the oven for this particular pair. So let me just press down everything. Now, a lot of these Birkenstocks, because after all they are still a cork and they're, you know, cork is a bit on the softer side always, we have to do a lot of pressing by hand and stuff. It's all a matter of timing, pressure and everything like that and uh, being patient with it. So, buckle this back up so that I can put this on the last. I'm going to have to unbuckle it again when I clean it, but I'm going to save the cleaning for the end a little bit so that I can make sure I clean off any glue residues and all that kind of stuff because it gets everywhere. So, all right. Ooh, that thing is hot. Just got to flip it around. My oven's kind of small here, so drink of water and then I gotta pull it out now I'll show you here in a minute like with this one it's a little bit different but this one's pretty straightforward especially because of the size of it and these uh, midsoles come pre-cut look how flimsy that is once it's warmed up when it's not warm that's it right there so just to give you an idea um, let's see I got the left 
foot here. Let me stick the Vibram sole in the oven for this one. Okay, and then this one here. Ah, look at how much material I have to... It's not going to waste, don't worry. We use these sometimes for small little build-ups or something like that. Um, so, I actually need a chunk of this for a few pairs over here that I have going on anyways. So, it's going to come in handy. So don't think it's all going to waste. Now, I have to tap this light. I can't be whacking this and I can't really put it under a press. Again, because it's a cork, even though I can regulate my press, it's still going to make it just a little bit wonky in other words because you've got the arch support features in the footbed and so it's a lot safer bet if i just make sure i press every every area down by hand and let it cool and sit for a good while before i do anything else to it other than cutting it of course i can definitely cut it while it's still warm while it's warm it's actually a lot easier Yeah, the thinner ones are a lot easier to cut for sure. I mean, it's not bad. I have to cut sometimes thick heels or something or a small chunk of it out. Sometimes we have to cut through a sole. I'll show you here in a second. I got a orthopedic lift I have to do on a pair of shoes for a lady. Okay, all right, so that piece I'm gonna save, but yeah, this one right here. Nope, make sure I'm not showing the ticket or anything. But yeah, I have to put a lift in here, so that means I have to slice through the sole here all the way across, remove that, put a lift in there, angle it and everything, and then re-adhere the sole. So it kind of gives you an idea of you know some of the stuff we have to cut sometimes. But there we go. We've got that midsole on there. It's gonna sit and cure for just a little bit. There or hang and cure. Now these, because they're a larger one and the type of Vibram sole, let me flip this around, because the Vibram soles are a pre-cut already as well, and this is a larger foot, I have to make sure that it's gonna fit. So, I'm gonna flip it upside down on this foot, and this will help me gauge where I need to try to get everything to hit. Okay, gives me an idea. So I'm watching the pattern here. And so I need to aim for right about here on the pattern and stuff. So time to do the unfun part because once I stick it, it's kind of hard to unstick it. So let's see, I have to aim about there and while it's just dangling there make sure everything else is lining up there we go all right just like that obviously this sole is designed for more of a you know, work boot or a full shoe or something but a Birkenstock, they've got a wider, much wider toe box and, and everything. So it's definitely one of those things where this is why I have to sit down a lot of times. And this is why I have to really keep an eye on it to center it as much as possible. I mean, it's more of an aesthetics thing um, with a Birkenstock, in other words. but on a shoe or boot, it can be a performance thing as far as centering a sole like that because the way the tread pattern is designed, um, especially if you're gonna be going in mud and everything like that. But I don't think this gentleman's gonna be going into any major mud with his Birkenstocks anytime soon. So, make sure everything's pressed. But that gives you an idea, look how much there's left over there. There's a little bit quite a bit at the toe there but as far as the width goes just barely there's just barely any left around certain areas and stuff so 
kind of gives you that idea of how much of a pain sometimes these are to fit and if you see the sole like say at our shop on the shelf up front for display purposes or on a boot it's not going to look the same going on to a Birkenstock so we want to give you a heads up at least on soles like this with a heavier tread pattern and stuff where the one that we're putting on the black pair um, that's got the same exact tread pattern all across it doesn't come it doesn't matter if it comes in a sheet or whatever it makes no difference it's just a matter of centering that uh, little vibe and logo in other words which is still going to be a little difficult on that Birkenstock just because it's smaller and the sh and the soles come pre-cut very large kind of like this guy here but all right I want to just show you guys that now this one I'm not going to cut yet just because um, I want it, I want this one to adhere. I can't cut this one by hand. I have to run it through our five in one, and the five in one has little wheels that press down and up from the bottom. And the problem is that because it presses the material so much together to slice through it, it may pull up a corner somewhere and make it a loose spot. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm definitely gonna let this sit and cure for a good while before I do anything else, including cutting. So. That's it for the moment. We'll see you back here in just a little bit when it's time to move on. All right, everyone. So, not this sole, but uh, I'm about to be sticking on the sole. I've got it in the oven at the moment. This is the same exact sole, basically. This one, however, is not sanded out yet. As you can tell right there, you can see the numbering and everything. It doesn't have a coating on it or anything, so it just kind of comes to show that a lot of these Vibem soles we do have to sand out. That's actually for another pair of Birkenstocks also. That skull is starting to blow up. Do you guys even see the cool little skull design? Look at that. Comes in a variety of different colors too. Now I don't have midsoles that will match all of them. Like the turquoise one and the purple one. Midsoles won't match those. So just as a heads up, if you're watching this and you want a pair of the uh, colored skull soles, it, uh, it, won't, it won't be one of those things that can easily match up a midsole for. But you can have a different colored midsole if you want. So if you're shipping them in, make sure to put that in your notes section uh, when you're sending it out. We have a little PDF form that you fill out and place in the box so we can track your order. And just put in the notes section that you want, you know, the turquoise colored one, like this guy here. And, uh, you know, a red midsole or a blue midsole or... You know, whatever I gotta get them I gotta get those midsoles so I can show you guys at the end of the video again but yep there we go so I'm just gonna press this all out by hand as you can tell very large sole so it fits a variety of sizes tried centering that as much as possible while the sole is still hot it feels like it may be off just a tiny bit but just a tiny bit I think I might be close to center but I'm gonna let this cool and then I can trim it up so uh, once it's time to sand, we'll, we'll be back here in a minute.
All right, everyone. So as you saw, there were some different steps that we had to do basically. While I'm talking, I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning these guys up. I've got desalt and vinegar mixture and easy clean and all that in this bottle. Kind of helps clean it up a little bit. But uh, anyways, as you saw, with the two different types of soles, I had to do two different methods of trimming out basically. At the end, I did finish them out on the on what's called the numb keg pad. And so that's one of those things that it uh, kind of does some final touching in other words. Man, whatever's on these guys does not want to come off. That white spots there. I mean, I'll do the best I can. Ideally, it would have been best to do a bath on these, but again, because we aren't replacing the footbeds on this particular one, we are not going to have much luck, unfortunately. I wonder. I wonder if I could do this a little bit. Try to get some of that black or some of that white off of it. But anyways, so the larger ones here, because of the thicker sole, I did have to go to the. Um, uh, I had to go to the sole trimmer, like we do with typical Birkenstock soles a lot of times but it is after all a sharp blade that spins very fast and so it was one of those things that I have to be very very careful with now at this point when we get to these ones however because they are thinner soles even though we have two layers basically on them um, that was th still thin enough and smooth enough of a transition with the sole that I was able to use the other trimmer to get them nicely touched up. And this stuff is... Man, I keep wanting to grab that bottle. But that just comes to show. Different soles, different techniques, different finishes and everything like that. So just to give everyone a kind of a rough idea of what it's supposed to be like that it's not all the same I know that Birkenstocks are all very similar but different soles will uh, bond a little bit differently cure a little bit differently trim out differently and I really want to make sure I showed that as well as because of the different thicknesses as you can tell that's a fairly thick sole there so now because of that midsole however if we have to use a colored midsole um, or even a brown. Unfortunately, these midsoles only come in the black. And so if you are wanting a particular sole put on there that's thin, we might not be able to match up the color well enough, but uh, the thickness will be a little bit thinner as well. It's only with the black ones that we can do it with. And these are fussy. I guess don't wear your Birkenstocks to paint and that's the other thing I guess I'll have to mention <laughs> because this isn't the first pair of Birkenstocks I've had to try to scrub down and usually this is something that costs a bit extra to do except this pair here I wanted to get it a little bit nicer at least so I'll do at least some of it I mean we'll We'll still clean it regardless and condition it, but if it's to this extent, I think honestly at that point we do have to charge a little bit extra just because, as you can tell, that's a lot of scrubbing and stuff that I have to do. And uh, definitely puts on some time and effort. And I, if, I did, if I was to have the bed replaced, the whole thing would be washed. Now, I'm gonna still put some cork seal on the edges of these ones here, which is this stuff here that I like to use. It goes on white and then dries clear. I'll just kind of show you guys real quick what it what it looks like. Um, just do this one here real quick. But that's how it goes on right there. Just wanted to show you guys real quick. And you, if you're putting on the cork seal, make sure you really get it into all the nooks and crannies on that cork seals it up nicely and then dries clear this one already has the cork seal on it but i am going through where did i 
I put that thing. I don't know my phone thinks I'm talking to it. We've got this uh, gum crepe here. We have a lot of pieces around the shop like this. And there's going to be small amounts of glue left behind. I'm just going to go through and clean it up. Now, however, the one thing that I'm having it show up as when I go through it leaves a little bit of a lighter mark like that on the leather. So this is an oiled leather, so I'll be able to buff a lot of that out there pretty easily just just by rubbing my finger across it to get the oils to kind of have the leather lay down flat but yeah as soon as I as soon as I rub it there that's what happens it becomes lighter and it just depends on which direction you push that leather all right do the same thing on the cork so at this point I'm I'm basically done with it I just gotta redo the uh, cork seal on the black pair clean them up a little bit more and they are packed up and ready to go ship and get shipped out so there you go two different uh, Birkenstock salt or two Birkenstocks two different soles different methods of application and it looks like I got dust all over my camera too sorry about that but that gives you an idea of what happens when we have a thinner sole that we have to put on and then a thicker sole. And then if you want to check out how we do it with a regular Birkenstock sole, I have a video already up of that doing a pair of Milano Birkenstocks. They're the ones with that back strap there. So if you want to check it out, definitely go ahead and do that. But for now, these are all set and ready to go. So if you have any other questions, um, comment down below. We are a little bit behind on our messaging, unfortunately. I'm the only one doing the work here at the moment so we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible if you want a quicker response feel free to call as well um, but otherwise if you want this service done check it out on our website at cobblersplus.com we'll be happy to help however we can and uh, most of these soles are available except for the sierra sole here i will have to work on trying to get that posted on our site but if you want the sierra sole just uh just let us know and uh, we'll we'll get that taken care of but i'll try to get that posted up on our website as soon as possible so again don't forget to like subscribe share the video and uh be sure to also hit the notification bell icon to be notified when we have our newest videos out and as well uh to be notified when we do any kind of live streams because we do that every now and then and we might be doing another giveaway kind of like we did recently with our uh soul talk sunday between the vibram and the day night soul and we hit 7,000 subscribers so i did seven gifts to give away so all right we'll see you guys next time